Kentucky and Duke in the Tip-Off Classic. The crowd here in Springfield waits in anticipation. One program is up and one program is done. But it's the number one Blue Devils of Duke up against the Kentucky Wildcats. Welcome, everyone, to Springfield. John Saunders along with Dick Vitalis. Yes, we tip off Dick Vitalis. 10th season of college basketball. Two teams anxious to get it underway, Dick, but for entirely different reasons. The allegations have followed Kentucky all summer. John, this is probably the toughest moment for me in my 10 years of TV because I've had such respect for Eddie Sutton. But right now, the perception of Kentucky is at an all-time low. It's created such an absolute stigma that has embarrassed the university. It has embarrassed not only the university, the state of Kentucky. And I just feel that a new, fresh breath of air has to take place. What I don't understand or can't comprehend is how the president can ask for the resignation of Cliff Hagan and not the resignation of the coaching staff. I thought he should have done both at the same time. Clean house, bring in someone new, a Mr. Clean of some kind, to bring a new, new, fresh attitude because it is not healthy, the general conception of what the people think out there. Whether innocent or whether guilty to those allegations, I think a change has to take place just to change the attitude. Not against Eddie Sutton, but the attitude and what's good for Kentucky basketball something new is needed. Strong words, but many people agree with you. On the other side of the coin, you have a program in Duke. They've been to the Final Four two of the last three years, and many people think they can get there again. Well, you know, Duke has the great combination. Mike Krzyzewski, the great coach, and Danny Ferry, the All-American, and a chance, really, to be Player of the Year. That combination should bring great, great success, and I look for a great year. They have a great chance to be a national championship team. Kentucky's lost almost their entire team. They've lost their entire starting lineup from last year. What do they have to do to win it? Well, first of all, they're going to have to handle that pressure defensively. Chris Mills, the diaper dandy, the great high school player from California, is going to play the point guard. Can he handle the pressure? On the other side, for Duke, they have to play at a fast-paced game. They have depth and they have an outstanding point guard in Quinn Snyder. He's going to have to run the ball up the court and create the transition and the easy basket. It's the second straight year that here at the Tip-Off Classic we've had number one. Last year was Syracuse, this year it's Duke. They'll go up against the Wildcats of Kentucky in just a moment. Thanks, Tim, and things have certainly changed since that time. The Kentucky Wildcats go against number one Duke, but Dick, we have to talk about it off the top of the show. Dick Vitale, along with John Saunders. The Kentucky Wildcats, the problem for them, the allegations from the NCAA, 17 of them, and they have to answer. John, right now, I'll tell you, this is the toughest thing for me to ever do in TV. I have great respect for Eddie Sutton, what he's achieved in the past, and also for all the coaches. I love coaching, but the perception of Kentucky is at an all-time low right now, and something has to be done. They need a new fresh breath of air no doubt about it they should have made a change when mr hagan went to the sideline and resigned the president should have asked for the resignation of the coaching staff well more on that in just a moment and we'll be back to tip off the tip off classic in just a moment the kentucky Welcome back to the Springfield Civic Center. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. Just about ready to tip it off. The Kentucky Wildcats against the number one team in the nation, the Blue Devils of Duke. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, you take a look at Mr. Miller, Derek Miller of Savannah, Georgia, a junior. He'll be starting at guard for Kentucky along with Chris Mills, the freshman out of Los Angeles. He's not a point guard, but he'll be playing there today. Reggie Hansen is also playing forward. And Mike Scott, the big guy who transferred from Wake Forest. And Laron Ellis, the sophomore, tremendous player. Danny Ferry, Ala abdul Nabi, and Robert Bricky playing up front for Duke, along with Phil Henderson and Quinn Snyder playing the point guard for Duke. The opening tip is tipped out of bounds. There's a look at Mike Krzyzewski on the sideline. What a record he's had. We look at the numbers right there, overall record, but in the last five years, he has averaged 27 wins a year. And in the last three years, the Ferry era, they've averaged 30 wins. Unbelievable. Danny Ferry has done the job since coming over. Out on the wing, it's Henderson. Henderson will be playing the shooting guard. Bricky, who used to play a lot inside last year, will be asked to do some more shooting this year for the Blue Devils. That's a five-second violation. That's typical Eddie Sutton defense. 
tremendous pressure on the ball, locked up. The one thing, as we look at Eddie Sutton right here, they will come after you. I want to clarify that point a little la earlier, later rather, what we made earlier about the perception of Kentucky basketball, John. We'll have time to talk about that as Miller has the ball. Miller is a good shooter. Chris Mills, we talked to him earlier as he moves it into Ron Ellis, who turns around, but the ball won't drop and Ricky, the big rebound. Ellis has to be a little bit more aggressive. He's got great tools. Anderson loses the ball as he tries to drive, and Ellis comes up with it. Chris Mills, as we talked about, is not a true point guard, but he says he has brought it up in high school before. He's a very versatile player. He's a kid that can shoot the ball, handle it. Tremendous high school talent. Let's take a look at the all-time victory leaders. And we talked about the program, Dick, at the top. The Kentucky, the perception of them is hurt. But you see where the, most of the perception has been throughout the years. What I want to say there is even if innocent or guilty on those allegations, I feel they need a new, fresh breath of air. And at the time of asking Cliff Hagen to step down, they should have included the coaching staff as well. Not that they're guilty. I have great respect for what Eddie Sutton has done. But the perception out there, every article you read, we saw one today in a Boston Herald by Charlie Pierce that was scathing and I just think it's been an embarrassment to the university and that's why I say they need to get some new life back into this once proud great program at Kentucky nothing to do with Eddie Sutton of course it's just the perception of Kentucky basketball Mike Scott the big guy in the middle 6'11 the only senior on the team transferred from Wake Forest of course a couple of years ago Chris Mills is being hawked by Bricky ball is stolen double dribble Mabby. Ooh, I thought it was a double dribble and Snyder comes up with it and puts it in for the first two points of the game. Underrated player had a step in last year for Tommy Amico, who's now a graduate assistant and was a tremendous defensive player, and he did a solid job for Duke at that point. Nice look pass by Scott, but Danny Ferry is there with a great defense on Miller in the rebound. Ferry brings it up just like he's a point guard. Great passer. In for Bricky, he gets fouled as he brings it up. Looks like Hanson. Ricky's got the great legs, John. He's a tremendous bouncer off the floor. We're going to watch him reverse the ball back to Snyder. There's Snyder with the drive down the lane, changes to the left hand. He's an outstanding young man, class in every way. I always tease my daughter. If you can find somebody, really, a class guy, go get me a Quinn Snyder as a son-in-law. Somebody from Duke. Why not? Well, it doesn't have to be from Duke. He's just a class guy. This kid, Ricky, they tell me, has really improved his game and has moved to the perimeter a little bit. This is the first free throw. Let's take a look at the keys to winning this game. It's going to be tough, certainly, for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, they're, be, they're asking him to handle the ball against the Duke pressure, and that's going to be tough. What a way to say, welcome to the world of college basketball, Chris Mills. Ricky missed both of them, and Chris Mills is certainly asked to do a lot. Of course, Sean Sutton likely would have been the starting point guard, the coach's son, but he suffered a fractured cheekbone when hit by Derek Miller in one of the blue-white games. Nice defense by Snyder, and a nice pass as he's falling down. Oh, what a great look. Oh, slam jam man, my first win of the year, the Duke Blue Devils. Hey, if the wackos were here from Cameron, they would be going bananas now. Tell you what, the Duke Blue Devils and Kentucky Wildcats are probably glad this one's being played at a neutral site with all the problems, but look at the pass. They call him the weatherman. Great look by Henderson. Good 45-degree angle on the cut to the goal, and there's the bounce off the floor. Ricky makes good on that one, and we have a 5 to nothing lead early. Here comes the pressure. The one thing, Kentucky has to go in at halftime within five or six for confidence alone. Chris Mills takes it in against Danny Ferry, and he's charged with a blocking foul. He did try to slide across, but didn't quite get there. Keys for winning for Duke, uh, John. We talked about it earlier. They have to create the up-tempo game, the transition game, and Quinn Snyder has to push the ball up the court. We saw previously an example of the layup three-on-one, and Duke's got to utilize that up-tempo because Kentucky doesn't have the manpower to go up and down the floor. This might be the weakest Kentucky team in many, many a year. I don't think there's much question about that as Chris Mills misses, but you reminded me earlier today, they do have some talent there. Well, Chris Laron Mills and Leron Ellis. Well, Leron Ellis and Chris Mills were player of the years in the state of California, and they headed out to Kentucky. But uh, really, they don't have the depth factor, and they need Sean Sutton back to give him a little leadership at that point guard spot. 
Anderson bringing the ball up this time. Talked about last year, he wasn't sure what they wanted his role to be, but I think he's a little happier this year and more comfortable with the role that he'll be able to shoot the ball. Ricky, rejected by LaRon Ellis. He's got talent. He can be as good as he wants. I told him yesterday in the lobby, I said, LaRon, if you just develop that hungry attitude, you can be a dominating kind of player. There he rotates over. There's Ellis. He says, no, Bricky, I don't care how high you jump. Get it out of the lane. Push it outside to Danny Ferry. Three-pointer is no good. Not even close. Henderson gets the rebound and puts it home. They're looking for some big scoring out of Henderson. He reminds many people of Johnny Dawkins. Though not in that class, certainly. Dawkins was a, such an explosive scorer in 1986. 7-1 is the early lead for Duke as they start to put a little bit of an early run on. And that's got to be trouble, Dick, for this Kentucky team. They are young, and they don't want to get behind and fold under the pressure. Well, you talk about youth. I think we were talking off the air. You look at this team. They only have four players that have played college basketball. Look at that pressure defensively. They come right up on the ball, and there's the good rotation over defensively by Ferry for the block shot. Hanson inbounds to Scott, and he hits it. I'll tell you, Dick, I saw some tape of Scott in an earlier game against Sweden, and he does have a nice touch for a big man. Yeah, he's not physical. I saw him at Wake Forest. He has touch. <laughs> Adrian Abbey with the ball. Ron Scott in the defense brings it away. Chris Mills with the ball. Mills is going to be an outstanding college player. Pelfrey who's in the game, number 34, and he hits the bomb for three. Pelfrey shoots that jump shot, squares up. He was a red shirt last year. He was also a forward and a center in high school, but they obviously with the size asked him to play guard. Even a little bit of point subbing in for Chris Mills today. Like that. Danny Ferry turns around with a jump hook. It won't go, and a big rebound by Mills. Mills very active. He'll be an outstanding number three man when they get the legitimate point guard something at the point. The ball is saved, but right back to Dukes, and Quinn Snyder pushes it. The law for Bricky, but he can't get up in time to get the ball. You know, the one thing about both clubs, they mirror each other in terms of the way they play. Pressure defense, very aggressive basketball. This is what we're talking about, the transition game. Pushing the ball up the court. They try to throw it a little lob, Snyder. They try to get the timing to Bricky, but they don't get it to convert. The score is 7-6. to six. The Duke Blue Devils, number one in the nation, lead Kentucky. Back with more in a moment. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Kentucky versus Duke, is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, by Nike, who reminds you to just do it, and by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Bill Henderson hit both free throws to give Duke a 9-6 lead early on in this game. And Dick Vitale, they've been ranked number one in the nation <laughs> by just about every preseason publication, including your own. What makes Duke so good, and how good are they? Well, the team defense, number one, and Mike Krzyzewski right now doesn't have a downside as a coach. If I had to hire one guy in America that I'd want today, it would be Mike Krzyzewski. The only thing negative about him is I can't spell his name. <laughs> but you look at Duke, and they have tremendous depth. But the one thing, they are not invincible. They don't have the explosive big-time scorer, a la Johnny Dawkins in 86, when they had that great year, and they lost to Louisville, I believe, in 86, uh, uh, down in the NCAA tournament. But I, I look at this basketball team and I see just a team that plays together they certainly are not invincible the ACC this year will be a step down the Big Ten and the Big East will be one two and it'll be like fighting whether you like Mantle or Mays but all the other conferences will be a notch below what about leadership on Duke remember that team in 86 had those seniors on it and and Allery and Billis and Dawkins and such that was a great point you just brought up John because I think they'll really miss Billy King not only defensively as we look at Mike on the sideline they'll miss him as a communicator defensively and such a leader on the floor they're gonna have to make up for that and remember Danny Ferry is an outstanding player but he's not a vocal guy he's not a guy that's animated on the court in terms of spurring other people on and leading in that fashion a couple of changes in the game Darren Feldhaus is in the game a guard and Greg Kubek for Duke number 22 a guy likes to shoot a double dribble call on Darren Feldhaus Fellhouse was a Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. They have another one on the sideline as we look at Eddie Sutton with his staff to the left, Wayne Casey, and to his, well, to his right was Wayne Casey, to the left, James Dickey. 
Kubek on the wing. He loves to shoot it to Smith. Snyder around the brick. He pushes it out to Kubek. You can look for him to shoot as he pushes it into Smith. Turns around and hits the short jumper. He can score inside. Had a great second year. Then last year he dropped a little bit. Lost his starting role. But he has ability to score in the lane. John Pelfrey, there you see him bringing the ball up, playing the point guard, and as we mentioned, played forward and some center in high school. Fancy can't handle the pass. They do a great job at the eye, and one pass away from the ball. They overplay the passing lane. They create good help situations. They're always getting good angles defensively. Most coaches say when you play against Duke, it's like playing against controlled chaos. They cause you to go in case. And a lob again to Bricky. He goes up for the pass. Not this time, as Hanson and Scott are there to swat it back in his face. Scott with a good reject inside. I want to welcome everyone once again to the Springfield Civic Center. This is the tip-off classic, Duke against Kentucky. This is a rematch of the inaugural classic 10 years ago. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. This basketball season is underway. Quinn Snyder on the wing is wide open. Well, he's wide open because they executed an excellent back screen. They sprung him to the screen area. He popped open in the open area and drilled a J. Quinn Snyder. Here's where we're going to see the inexperience. Possibly, you got a guy like Snyder who's a great ball hawk, good defensively, working against some young guys. Notice how they really pressure the ball and deny the ball one pass away. Alfred at the top. Quinn Snyder is all over him. They would, they would like him to even be a little bit tougher on the ball. And Ron Ellis with the short shot that will not fall. Ball is out to Kentucky. The problem with Kentucky will be they have to keep the game in the 60s. They don't have the scoring power to get into the 80s and 90s. So they're going to keep, they have to keep the game in the 60s for a chance to win. 13 to 6 is the early score with 14.09 left in the first half. Duke leads Kentucky. Duke, the number one team in the nation, working against a very young Kentucky team. Hanson, they say, may be the best athlete on the Kentucky team. He's been impressive in their workouts. They think he can be a good player. Big rebound by Kubek, who is a good rebound. He, good rebounder. He did an outstanding job for Duke. The only freshman last year to start in every game for the Blue Devils. Oh, play in every game. He didn't start, John. Pardon me. That's what I meant to say was the play in every game. Danny Ferry with a nice move. Well, you're in, you're entitled to a turnover. Those football <laughs> games blow my mind. We have to rush. We can't do our opening. they got to jam it on us. Look at the team experience right here. Unbelievable when we look at Duke versus Kentucky. I think the biggest sign as we look right here, you talk about Kentucky, they lost seven players. They lost their five seniors, plus they lost Rex Chapman, and they also lost Eric Manuel. When you lose seven like that, it's going to be very difficult for Eddie Son. I think if this team could reach mediocrity and be a 500 team, they would be really playing to their maximum. Danny Ferry hits the first free throw. You want to talk about inexperience. The 13 players on the Kentucky team, Dick, they total 895 minutes last year. That guy in the free throw line, I think he had more than that. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a look at Eddie Sutton. It has not been an easy time for Eddie, and I really know it's been a tough, tough time, but he's had to face there with the allegations and the stigma that's been created over the perception out there. It's just been amazing. Ron Ellis is out high. Danny Ferry is on him. Hanson tries to put the ball on the floor. They lob it ahead to Danny Ferry. He's all alone and jams it. Oh, to Demanda with a monster man. Danny Ferry, not a great jumper. Little high five. They love him down at Duke. He broke the hearts of the people in North Carolina when he said, I'm coming to Durham, North Carolina. Watch him play D. Now look at him. He's going to harass right here defensively. And now he's got good help. He sees the ball. Now he spots the ball is loose. Look at him like a tight end. Like a tight end. He says, Bavaro, I can do everything you do because you're not doing anything this year for the Giants. Kentucky has turned the ball over six times, resulting in 13 Duke points. Stay with us. There's more to come from Springfield. Welcome back to the Springfield Civic Center. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. The Blue Devils lead it 17-6 to after that big dunk by Danny Ferry. Take a look here again at Mike Krzyzewski. You know, his first three years, life wasn't easy at Duke. He had a 17-10 season, but then they really struggled for two years. In fact, it got so bad that they were beaten by Wagner, and they booed the Duke team. Wagner, where's Wagner? I know it's in Staten Island. At home. Ron Ellis is on the free throw line. Got a technical foul call? Yep. 17 to 8. Ellis pulls them to within 9. 
intentional grab to shirt. Mickey Crowley gave me the information right here. Nice to be right next to the officials like that. I got four. I got four. Let's go. Kentucky will also have the ball to inbound down by nine and a chance to cut it to seven. Intentional foul, two shots in the ball. Hanson out to Ron Ellis. They take such great pride in their defense. Look at them. It's rapping, hustling. Aaron Feldhaus with a jumper and does hit it. He can shoot the ball. He's, oh, an they work. He's an excellent open shooter. John Smith. The ball won't go. Bodies are falling all over the place. And, of course, there'll be a travel call on that. As soon as you fall to the deck with the ball, it's an automatic, an automatic walk-in violation. Earlier, Dick, we talked about the keys to winning. You talked about Chris Mills handling Duke's defensive pressure. Well, you look here, Duke's already got 13 points off the turnovers, putting pressure on the ball, pushing it out, and getting the easy score. Mills was asked to handle that at the point guard slot. We take a look at Chris right here. Duke turns the ball over on the walk. Reggie Hansen inbounds to Darren Feldhaus. Eddie Sutton is one outstanding teacher defensively. If he has equal talent and they go head-to-head, -head, these two teams mirror each other. If you would see the statistics from last year, they're basically equal in almost every area. Feldhaus was open for a little while, puts it on the floor, puts up the shot, and it won't go in again. Kubek gets up for another big rebound. They have to get Kubek free for the three-point shot. He can really drill the long-range bomber. Speaking of threes, there's Danny Ferry that won, won not fall. Helton gets the rebound. Bill Henderson all over Pelfrey. Nice backdoor. And a blocking foul call. Excellent backdoor cut. Duke a little bit slow, rotating over to give help. They cut great backdoor play. Watch this right here. They run backdoor, cuts behind the defender right now, catches him staring at the ball, and there's the rotation over, and it's a little slow. Kubik got caught staring at the ball. Hanson on the came over to help, but he was late, as you say, and that's where the foul was called. Hanson was already in there with the two. Well, the chance to cut the lead down to 17-13 as Kentucky hangs in here early with 12 minutes left. Already last night you had a big surprise with Xavier beating Louisville. Everybody's been touting Louisville, and the Kentucky fans were jubilant in the hotel lobby, those that were around, when they received the score. I don't think they like Louisville. they like Louisville? I thought they loved them. I thought they loved those rivers. <laughs> you were surprised the way they acted, huh? They may not get everything they want down here this weekend, but they certainly got a loss for Louisville. What a great performance by Stan Kimbrough, Peter Gillen, one of the real rising stars, along with Eddie Fogler in the coaching business. Hanson tried to lob it inside to Leron Ellis. The pass goes out of bounds, and Duke will inbounds the ball. They make it so tough for you to get a rhythm to your offense, especially when you're playing with inexperienced people like Kentucky. We documented it earlier. Four players have only wore or played a college game on the Kentucky squad. Bill Henderson will be asked, of course, to sub in for the ball is tipped away by Hanson, away from Danny Ferry. We'll be asked to sub at the point guard some. He's playing there right now. So he'll give Quinn Snyder a break. Christian, back on the wing. Christian Leitner on the floor. Big 6'10 player, a finesse player. Outstanding high school prospect last year from out of Buffalo. Ooh, look at some of these scores. Stanford, expectations like Connecticut, but they meet them and they win. Indiana, Jay Edwards playing for the general blowout. Illinois State and Georgia. Watch Georgia. They're my favorite to win those SEC. I think Florida just has a little too much turmoil. We want to remind people, of course, that we will have the semifinals and finals of the Big Apple NIT. And Good by Tal, you'll be there as we look at some more of the scores from last night. Well, we talked about the Xavier game with Louisville and Missouri. Maybe this year they'll put that chemistry together. Chivas is starring. Wyoming beats John Schumann in his debut with SMU and Syracuse. Billy Owens and company, but it was the Sherman Douglas show last night for Jimmy Behan. Syracuse looked very strong last night. Leitner puts up the points. Welcome to the college game for the freshmen. He's going to give them a player that's going to play inside and outside. He can play the high, high post as well. And they have another freshman, but I'm a Crawford Palmer, who's a very physical player, about 6'9 and a half, 6'10. 
Thurston Leitner, they say, is a lot like Danny Ferry. They're not saying necessarily that he has that type of talent, but he's that type of player, a big guy who can shoot and has the nice soft touch and can play inside as well. A bomb from the outside for Chris Mills. Chris Mills. Get that down. He's going to have many more of those in his career. Chris Mills, you don't score 33 a game and get 13 rebounds a game at Fairfax in L.A. if you can't play. Reggie Hansen with a big block on Danny Ferry, but as they struggle for the ball, Hansen is called for another foul. This is what we talked about, what a great athlete he is, Dick. I think Hansen could be a solid player. There he is defensively. He says, Danny Ferry, I don't care you're All-American. I don't care. I'm Reggie Hansen. I want to earn my due. Ferry says, get out of my way, Hansen. Hansen says, no, Big Ferry. Not this time. That shows, as we said, what a great athlete he is. That was the sixth team foul for Kentucky. So they'll be up in the bonus now. Wide open is Henderson and hits it. Henderson gives him that perimeter shot, and that score he'll make up for the loss of Kevin Strickland, who averaged about 16 points a game and graduated. Just when the young guys from Kentucky seem to get it down to four or five points, back comes Duke to bump in a couple. Feldhouse is long with the first, but what a nice tip in there by Palfrey. They're getting contributions out of Fellhouse and Pelfrey off that bench. Well, that's got to be key for them, obviously, to win this. And Snyder, Ferry, over to Henderson, who's wide open, sends it up and knocks it down just like that. Excellent pass by Ferry, though, the zigzag pass. He flashes to the post, looks to the opposite side, and Henderson drives the J home. Quinn Snyder back on the floor. Great defensive player. All the team in assists last year as well. Feldhaus. Pelfrey. Trying to get some movement out of the offensive half court game. Hansen again look for Ron Ellis. It goes flying about three rows in past the press desk. He tries to save it. Nice block there by Chris Mills. And again, Ellis is wide open. Nice move and banks it home as he goes around Snyder. Good agility by Leron Ellis. I really like his talent. His dad was Leroy Ellis, an All-American who played at St. John's and was on a coaching staff at George Rambling at the University of Southern Cal. The bomb is up, but it's no good. Gets his own rebound. That's Quinn Snyder and throws it up with one hand, and it drops. Quinn Snyder with a good offensive little jump hook in the lane. You talk about Ellis and Mills coming out of California. So many kids were leaving. The Scott Williams left. Stephen Thompson left. Playing at Syracuse. Well, look at these scores right here. Notre Dame 21-3. The Fighting Irish. Udo number one. Ricky Hansen. UCLA with a three-point lead over USC. And Michigan beats Ohio State for the Buckeyes with a big, big close game in this one comes in 29 to 10 over south carolina you look at some of the top ranked teams in the nation oh, oh, great great with the move. took a little step yes, yes sir good ball. Ball. Hop with the ball definitely lifted the pivot hey you said big score with ohio state with michigan there's no big score <laughs> when you don't win and you're from ohio state especially playing at home it's been a tough time for john cooper but gary williams i saw him the other day he's got a team that could really surprise along with connecticut wichita state and you watch Murray State. Not the dance studio, Arthur Murray to beat Valvano. Murray State. Are you telling me that Ohio State's a basketball school now? They're not a football school? They're selling out all their games. There's so much excitement down here. <laughs> Woody Hayes, you never believe it. Ron Ellis out to Hanson. See, they're playing a high offense to try and create some backdoor cuts. Using Ellis up at the top. Foul line extended, trying to take time off the clock. They're so well drilled. Eddie Sutton is a real giant coach, and I've rated him as a Rose Royce coach over the years. Clay Buckley is in the game for Duke. He's one of those guys, they have six of them, that are 6'10 or taller on this team. Tallest team ever in the history of the ACC. Shot clock, John. I don't know if he's aware of the shot clock. Four seconds. Foulhaus with two seconds left, puts it up and does hit it. Couldn't design it any better. Give the ball to the hot shooter, Foulhaus. Get some emotion out of the team. Get them to believe they can win. It's a one-point game as well. 25-24, Duke leads as Quinn Snyder puts up the three-pointer, but it's short and will not fall. The ball comes out to Chris Mills, and he is fouled by Greg Kubek. Tripped up. 
give some credit to this young Kentucky team. They are down by just one with seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Stay with us. It's 25 to 24. The Blue Devils lead the Wildcats. Back with more in a moment. Well, I'll tell you right now, we're taking a look right here out of the half-court offense of Kentucky, trying to use the shot clock, and they do it to perfection. They play like a high-post offense. There's the ball to Ellis. There's Mr. Fellhouse, squares up, and he drives home. NBN, nothing but nylon out of the half-court game designed by Eddie Sutton. Kentucky Wildcats, the young team, is shooting over 56% at this point in the game. Duke, they're the experienced team, try 38%. And that's why Kentucky's been able to stay so close. See, they're playing like a 2-3 offense. They run three guys across the bow and extended and get some good backdoor cuts. Should have given it off. Should have given it off for the easy layup to his teammate. Did you see his open teammate? A reminder, we have two great games of college football coming your way tonight here on ESPN. At 6 Eastern time, Syracuse, the number four team in the nation, against West Virginia, trying to set up a matchup undefeated against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. And then it will be Miami against LSU. The Miami Hurricanes still have dreams of winning the national championship. Tonight on ESPN, Danny Ferry hits the shot. Great execution. Ferry along the baseline, catches the ball, good hands. Hey, Bino Cook told everybody early in America, he said, well, West Virginia undefeated, number one. Bino smiled, great call, big fella. They still got to win a couple more games to win it all, but Bino was right on the money with this. John Pelfrey with the ball for Kentucky, being watched by Quinn Snyder, dishes it off to Feldhaus. Very reached in, but no foul call. Feldhaus along the baseline, dishes it out to the big guy, Scott. The short jumper is short what Kentucky is doing. They're trying to make it difficult for Duke to really overplay and extend because they're setting him up for some backdoor cuts. He can shoot the ball, Kubek, in and out. Kubek attempting the three-pointer. It will not fall. Nice defensive play. As Kubek got in to get in the face of Mills and he could not take the pass and it goes out of bounds and Duke will the ball. You know, we mentioned as Ellis comes back on the floor from out of California, played a modern day high school player of the year in California, turnovers 11 for Duke, Kentucky 4 for Duke. Sean Higgins was a teammate of Chris Mills and they tell me he's really shooting the ball well for Michigan. Michigan, by the way, is loaded personnel. Bill Frieder's got a great team down there in the Big Ten, but he's got a lot of competition by, by the likes of Iowa and Illinois, and you know Bobby Knight's always going to be in there fighting. You better lace him up to play the general, especially in Bloomington. Danny Ferry gets called for the charge as he tried to push along the baseline, kind of pushed his body into the defender. Well, he leaned in, principle of verticality, he stepped in, the defensive player. This is point of emphasis. There he is in post position. The defensive player is entitled to that position. He definitely steps in, and there's Jerry Donahue with the call. Good call, Jerry. Good position by Reggie Hansen. 27 to 24, five minutes and 38 seconds left. We have a close one, folks, and many people might not have expected this. This is a bit of a surprise, a very young Kentucky team. Well, although maybe Dick Vitale wasn't surprised. Did I tell you today in the hotel, I jumped all over you. I thought it's going to be a lot tougher early, especially than people think. Ricky to Snyder. And Laurent Ellis was shifting over on the defense, but he's called for the foul. Deron Ellis, a very active player. He's more or less like a forward than a center, but he's going to really have to play in a lane for this club and post up and get some good scores inside with his back to the basket. See, look at Duke right here, pressuring. There they are, rotating over. Good help, good anticipation. See, ball you man to push the ball up the court. Snyder now shooting the one and one as Duke is into the bonus. This is the front end, and Ron Ellis hauls down the rebound. Does Pelfrey handle the ball? Schneider can put even more pressure when he's dribbling the ball. So Laurent's got three fouls already, doesn't he, John? That's very early in the game for him to be in the foul trouble. Eddie Sutton, though, leaves him on the floor. Try to pass it in to Laurent Ellis. Snyder lays it out to Bricky to Ferry. He pushes it inside to Bricky again. A nice pass by Danny Ferry. I'd get a timeout right now. I think that he's going to get one. Good backdoor cut. Good cut by Mr. Bricky. Actually, it's like a give and go. You call that a middle cut, not a backdoor cut. Danny Ferry, they call him one of the best passers in the game. Best to come along since Larry Bird, perhaps. Watch this pass. There's more to come here from Springfield. 29 to 24 is the score. Duke leads Kentucky. 
Thank you very much, Tim Brando. It is a 29-24 game with 4.46 left. We're going to take a look at Danny Ferry right now, trying to post up inside. Watch him right here, trying to get position down in the boxes. There he is right here, getting, trying to lock inside. And he steps out off the post, and he sees right over the top of the defender, Hanson. Good cut by Bricky. Bricky moves well without the ball, which is one of the worst arts of the game. Everybody wants to pound the ball and then down. Joe Cook is into the game for Duke. He's a sophomore out of Lincoln, Illinois. Defensive specialist, that's what they brought him here for. A little bit upset with him last year. He tried to shoot the ball too much when he got in. But he can do the job defensively. Quinn Snyder comes up with a loose ball. This is to Danny Ferry. Guess what? What an excellent transition play by Snyder and Ferry. Great basketball. He looks to the left, doesn't kick it out to Cook. He says, hey, Cook, I can't give it to you on the left when I got the horse next to me, Mr. Ferry. Blocking foul is called. The ball was lobbed into Leron Ellis. Let's watch the basket by Ferry again. Quinn Snyder does the work. See the key right here? Watch him push the ball up the floor. Look at his eyes. He's looking. He knows where he is. Oh, uh, draws the defense to him. We talk about the 3D man. Excellent play. Snyder to Ferry. Joe Cook was called for the foul. Only a six-team foul against Duke. So Kentucky's not into the bonus yet. They will be with their next foul. Abdel Nabi's been quiet. They really said he had a great preseason. Ricky comes over and grabs the ball on the steal and another turnover for Kentucky. Joe Cook gets the guys up on the floor, gets Ellis and Mills both up off the floor and then just deposits it rather easily. There's the transition game we talked about earlier, the conversion in transition. Very important time segment now for Kentucky. Right here, they have to be able to get a score to quiet this rally or Duke can blow out to a big lead here at halftime. It was 25-24, but eight to nothing run by Duke, and it's 33 to 24. And what's amazing, John, they're doing it with their defense, basically creating the fast break opportunity. Look at Snyder right here. I love the way his head is up. He has good vision. Look, Cook said, "I'm not supposed to be a scorer, but how's that head fake? What a good little head fake." 21 points for Duke Wolf turnovers. Our stat people doing a great job. Kentucky with three. That's why it's a 33 to 24 lead as Ron Ellis will go to the line. As you look at Henderson, who's back into the game. He does have a look-alike of Johnny Dawkins, but Johnny was such a creator and an explosive scorer. The problem with Duke will be in the close game against people that are equal in talent. Can they get a score from someone when the defenses really force them in a situation where they break down out of their half-court game? Hey, there's Mr. Brando and Mr. Cook coming up at halftime. What a duel that is. That's unbelievable. It's like having a crystal ball in the studio with Bino Cook. Very seldom wrong. And Tim Brando sits in there all day long pumping out the scores and highlights for college football. And does one heck of a job, Mr. Brando. I don't like working with him because he's too good looking. <laughs> and I got to sit next to him. It makes me look ugly. Look that first move right there by Ferry. And Ferry turns around over top of Ron Ellis and drops it in. Simply gets good post position, beats him to the ball, good hands, good release. Pressure by Quinn Snyder on John Pelfrey. Snyder reaches in and gets called for the foul. Yeah, see, Pelfrey's not comfortable in that point position. Look at Ferry right now. He's going to set all this up. There comes the screen by Bricky. Hey, give Bricky a credit for that. He lays the horizontal screen that frees Ferry for the deuce. Number 21, Danny. Go hug him. He set that up for you. Foul was on Pelfrey as he tried to hook his way around Quinn Snyder, and he forces yet another turnover. Kentucky goes to the zone. They're going to a little zone right now. Henderson, long range, almost gets a good roll, but it won't fall down. Duke had bailed out. And Kentucky gets the rebound easily. See, the problem for Kentucky, they can't get easy baskets like they did in the past with Chapman and David. A good move inside, Ellis, a good touch. I just, I just think this kid could be one great player. He just needs a little bit more work ethic and a little bit more aggressiveness. Quinn Snyder out on the wing as Joe Cook brings the ball up. Up to Henderson. Danny Ferry off the glass. And what a time. Starting to take over the game. Getting position anytime, any place he wants on the floor. 37-28. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Quinn Snyder on Pelfrey. Laron Ellis almost loses the ball. The foul is called against Quinn Snyder as he reaches in on the near turnover. One, one four. 
Fox Ellis, number 25, now flash on a good inside position on Ferry, trying to get over the top. Rotation over a little bit slow. Ellis with a good touch. Now Danny gets right into a gap and seam right here on Mr. Ellis. A little payback. This is I want some respect. Danny Mary has nothing but respect. ACC Player of the Year last year. I'll tell you what's going to be open this year. I think one of the great themes of college basketball, who will be the Player of the Year? It's been a Danny Manning or a Michael Jordan or a David Robinson. They lose the ball, Kentucky's ball. But this year could be a Sean Elliott, Stacey King, Danny Ferry, Sherman Douglas. The beat goes on, and I'll give you a kid watch out for. Glenn Rice at Michigan. The best wing player maybe in the nation in terms of rebounding and scoring for Mr. Frieda. That's the second time you've mentioned Michigan in this telecast. You're putting the pressure on your buddy Bill Frieda down there. Well, I'll just say this. They beat Yugoslavia by better than 20, and Yugoslavian team beat, as Mr. Ellis comes up with a deuce, beat Georgetown and beat Syracuse. We've got a good one down there in the Big Ten. Joe Cook still on the floor. They figure he can run walk. the point from time to time. Boy, oh, I thought he did a little dance up on the top. Something was called away from the ball. Yeah, I thought I agree with you. It looked like his feet were shuffling. You know, mentioning the rules, John. Basically, the big rule change this year involves fighting. If you're fighting for the first time, if you're caught in a fighting situation, you're ejected from the game. The second time is a one-game suspension. The third time, it's a knockout punch for the year. A coach, the head coach, is permitted to come on a floor this year in the event a fight takes place. No one else from the bench can leave the sideline. <coughs> Ricky's at the free throw line. Kubek has checked back into the game and Cook has left. Here's a look right now. We just mentioned the fighting. Just went over that for you. Throwing's important now. It's like the NBA. You must release the ball. In the past, the ball just simply had it been thrown on the floor, had it been caught by a player prior to the count of five. Now you just must release it before five. Ron Ellis going for the ball. He has three fouls on him as well, as does Reggie Hansen for Kentucky. So two of their big names they cannot afford to lose. Big possession right here. You can get it to six, or you're down by ten. Oh, nice pass. Ron Ellis to John Pelfrey, who lays it in. Ellis has done a solid job scoring inside. Good look to Pelfrey, cutting without the ball. And now they come back in their zone. The wing should be open for a jump shot. They should get the ball over to Henderson for a wide open wing jumper if they reverse the ball. So it may be Kubek. Now reverse it. The wing should be open. Kubek was way short with his three-point attempt. And Kentucky will have a chance to cut this lead down to four with just over a minute left. Mills, the freshman, gets the shot. You have to like Chris Mills. When you talk about the diaper dandies, he's going to have a great year, Mr. Mills. And also Chris Jackson down at LSU is going to have a phenomenal year. I think they nailed him with a T. Yes, they did. Technical foul on Mike Krzyzewski. Not a good time for a technical, a technical right there. Foul has been called on the new bench. He's still barking at the officials. I'm not exactly sure what Mike Krzyzewski so upset about. He got that from his mentor, the general, Robert Montgomery Knight. No. Played under him over at West Point. Coached under him at Indiana. And Ron Elvis will be at the line. Shooting the technical. And yeah. just... John, you have to really like Mills, don't you? Oh, you have to. No question, he is, as you say, Diaper Danny, and he's an impact player. And even more so, with all the players that Kentucky has lost, he has to be an impact player. Look at Ellis. Look at Ferry now. He beats Ferry to the ball very quick. Nice bounce pass. Oh, his daddy would be proud. An excellent cut by Pelfrey going to the goal. Derek Miller is into the game. Number four for Kentucky, a three-point shooting specialist. They say that, but he really was so ineffective last year and then complained about PT playing time. I said, this year you'll get some playing time. He's got to deliver. As a freshman, he led the team from the three-point strike, but then as a sophomore, went down his percentage to somewhere around 14. Foul against Kentucky. It's just a three-point game with 41 seconds left in the first half. Kentucky foul on number 42, Chris Mills. A very it's close third, game here in Springfield, foul. Massachusetts. Kentucky down by three with 41 seconds left. 
in the first half. The Kentucky Wildcats, an extremely young team, expected to be blown out by some people by this number one team in the nation. But Dick, you were right. When you have the athletes and you've got a good coach, anything's possible. Well, they've been working real hard. That's been the one release for Eddie Sutton to get into the gym. He told me he has to give himself pep talks uh, during the day in his office and constantly give his players pep talks to keep their mind off all the allegations, all off the articles and the things that have happened with this program. And it has not been easy. This is the one part they love, though, competing, being involved in competition, playing basketball. That's what Eddie Sutton loves the best. Didn't you say, Dick, that it didn't matter, that Eddie Sutton said it didn't matter what trials and tribulations they'd gone through. They still have Kentucky written across their chest. Their jersey. And that's a lot of pride because I'll tell you one thing. I love going there for a basketball game. Such tradition and just a tremendous arena. Look at that cut right there by Ellis. Great cut without the ball. LeBron Ellis showing flashes of why he was a high school All-American. Time is running down. Under five seconds left. Duke needs to get the shot off. Out on the wing to Cook. No good. Does not no good. get it off. And we have a two-point game at the half. Duke leads it 39 to 37. The number one team in the nation. LeBron Ellis though. He is the big name on this Kentucky Wildcat team and boy is he keeping his team in it. Ron Ellis doing it all, cutting without the ball, beats Danny Ferry, the All-American, right to the goal, and then has the agility and the balance to pick up his speed and make the little deuce. It's just a two-point game. The Blue Devils, number one in the nation, but only up by two, 39. ESPN's NCAA basketball, Kentucky versus Duke, is brought to you by Subaru. We build our reputation by building a better car by the financial professionals at Payne Weber, by Nike, who reminds you to just do it, and by Burger King, where we do it like you'd do it. And we'll continue to update you on scores from Showdown Saturday throughout the second half. Don't forget our scoreboard show immediately following the tip-off classic, where John Saunders and Dick Vitale are standing by in Springfield, Massachusetts. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Tim Brando. I know you can't wait to get out and do your college basketball games in a great season we have ahead. 212 games on ESPN, and this one of our first ones. What a game we have, 39-37. to 37. Kentucky, Dick, they said they couldn't stay with the Duke Blue Devils, but a great game we have. Eddie Sutton's doing a great job. Well, they had a great performance out of LaRon Ellis. That's the best I've seen him play. Last year, he was brilliant against Notre Dame over in Louisville in a game that I had the good pleasure to see. And I just think today he's been a dominant force. He has negated the great ability of Danny Ferry. He has neutralized them, rather, basically is a better word than negating them. As we look at the comparison now between both guys, check out the numbers. Numbers. Ellis with 13 points, two rebounds. Ferry with 10 and three rebounds. And they're both going head to head here. And Danny Ferry is going to show you how to get good post position inside and rotating over to the low boxes. There's Ellis 25 trying to check number 35, the MVP in the ACC. There's the good hands by Danny Ferry. He spins, shoots the little jumper. And now we go on the other end of the floor. floor and this is the key the patience of Kentucky. Spread the court. Great game plan by Eddie Sutton. Use the shot clock. Kick it out right now to Feldhaus. Darren Feldhaus with the open jump shot. The key is they're patient, and they didn't fold. It wasn't El Foldo when I thought that Duke had a chance. There's a right there, Steve Reardon. 600 consecutive games watching Kentucky play. Unbelievable. He never misses one, and I bet he's glad he hasn't missed this one because he's seeing a great game. We start the second half, and it's 39 to 37. Ron Ellis with the ball. See, there's the pass to the wing, and then you cut through. Feldhouse tries to cut it through the paint, pushes it back out. Way out is Pelfrey. See, watch Pelfrey now. He'll throw the ball, and then he'll go through the defense. They try to get balance, two out, three in. High post with Ellis, he's so quick, and he can make it tough for Abdelnabi right now. He should, Mills. he should be really confident with the way he's played, Ellis. Ron Ellis is playing a great game, and that's showing leadership for a sophomore when you need someone to come through, as they do. Shot clock is down to seven. Hanson with the ball, I don't know if he realizes it. It's down to three, pushes it out to Ellis. They're not going to get it off, and they don't. The only thing good about that is that they had a lot of patience and they used the shot clock. But right now, Eddie Sutton wants them to get into their offensive scheme just a little bit quicker so they can get a good high percentage shot. 58% for Kentucky, Duke shooting 50% for the half. A good solid game 
when you think about this being the first game of the year for both clubs on a neutral floor. Ricky is out on the wing, pushes it inside to Abdul Nabi. Can't hang on to the ball, loses it, but the loose ball, a nice pass by Snyder into Abdul Nabi. Well, he drove the bounce pass. Great pass, you youngsters out there in traffic. Don't use the air ball pass. Use the bounce pass. I'll tell you something else, another adjustment that Eddie Sutton made that I thought was excellent. Go into the zone to take away that man-to-man -man motion offense of, of Duke. Motion offense is man-to-man -man defense and motion offense. That's the key to Mike Krzyzewski. Jedi spread the court, 2-3 set. Ellis trying to handle the ball, dishes it off. Finally, Mills can't get the shot, but Ellis is there to put home. He had another two points. And again, it's a two-point game. Ron Ellis is very active. He's got tremendous agility for a guy his size and mobility as well. Now we're looking at the zone. It's like a 2-3 setup. They'll try matching up, communicating and matching up. Danny Ferry, the shot won't fall. Chris Mills hauls down yet another rebound for the young freshman. See, right now, tempo so important. The zone creates a slower tempo. The offensive Kentucky's creating a slower tempo. And that's what Mr. Sutton wants, a slower-paced game. Hanson into Ron Ellis. A nice lob pass into Hanson. And coming down on top of his back is Bricky. Hanson, it looks like, may have been hurt on the play. He's, He's right. holding He's on right. to the right knee. Watch as Bricky goes up. He goes for the fake and then comes right down on the back of Reggie Hanson. What a great look also by Leron Ellis. Excellent pass. There's Ellis. Ball pops loose, but Mr. Ellis stays down with the ball. Good poise, good presence. Knows where his teammate is, Chris Mills. What a combination Mills and Higgins must have been for Fairfax High School. Can you imagine having two high school forwards like Sean Higgins of Michigan and Chris Mills? I'll tell you, a lot of college coaches as Hanson goes up with a nice tip for two more. I would have loved to have kept them together. No one blocks out, and he gets the open deuce. I'll tell you one thing, this Kentucky club is very, very scrappy, and they're aggressive here right now. Ty Gary, oh, they missed to Abdul Nabi with a nice little short jump. They missed the call on Snyder. I thought they could have had him nailed for a charge after he passed the basketball. Duke regains the lead, 43 to 41. Darren Feldhouse. John Pelfrey, young guys just doing the job for Kentucky. Ron Ellis wanted to pass to Hanson, but he's marked nicely. Ellis puts the shot up and gets the nice roll. He's playing with so much confidence. I watched him last year, John. There was no way he played with the confidence he's playing with now. Look at him trying to get over the top of Barry. It's a foul against Leron Ellis. The thing I like about him, though, he's welcoming the challenge of Danny Ferry, everybody's first-team All-American. Kentucky foul at number 25, Leron Ellis. Look at Leron Ellis. He's in triple threat position. He can pass, he can shoot. And there he is right there with a little dribble move, shooting the jump shot. He got his fourth foul, and that is big, John, going to the sideline. The one man they couldn't afford to lose is going to the sideline. With 16 minutes, 33 seconds left in the second half, Leron Ellis picks up his fourth foul, and Mike Scott has to come in for him as Quinn Snyder hits the three-point shot to give Duke a three-point lead, 46 to 43. Remember, when he went to the sideline, the score was 43-43 with 16-plus minutes left. Mike Scott, the big senior, Went to Wake Forest in his freshman year when there was a coaching change there. Bob Stack came in. He decided he wanted to come back home and go to school at Kentucky. He hasn't been much of a factor in his other two years at Kentucky, but he's going to have to be a big factor now with Leron Ellis sitting down with four fouls. He's very limited in his ability. He's got a good touch for a big kid, but he doesn't have the strength. Chris Mills tries the three-pointer and does not get it. The ball goes out of bounds. And Duke will have possession. There's the star. He's been the star today, Leron Ellis. 17 star. points, but the key is the four fouls, Dick. Back with more in a moment. <laughs>
46 to 43 is the score. Rex Chapman decided to go to the NBA. You know, one publication, Dick called them the young and the Rexless. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Rex goes to the NBA, and he's shooting horribly. Shot selection's been a problem. As we look here at our storyline, Ellis's performance has been brilliant. We look here at turnovers. Kentucky turning the ball over 16 times, giving Duke 21 points off those turnovers, and that's basically the difference. But remember this. They could have been and would have been unbelievable. Chapman, Eric Manuel, Sean Kemp. Wow. What a team they would have had, but with the team they do have now, fans calling for a foul on Henderson, who just lowered the boom on Feldhaus. See Feldhaus playing up on top. They're really not able to pressure like they'd like with this kind of an offensive setup. Did he even bring the big guy to Inver? Good balance. There's the backdoor cut. Reggie Hansen took a great pass from Mike Scott, but just couldn't get the handle on it, or he would have had an easy two points. Well, maybe a little hole down on that end that wasn't called. Eddie Sutton feels that way. Good hustle by Scott. Feldhaus comes up with the ball and pushes it back out to John Pelfrey. See, right now, Snyder's going to come after the ball a little more. There's another backdoor cut. A two... Two backdoor cuts in a row, and they have no score. Sutton is furious with the officials. He thought they missed one, and there's Barry with the big three. And you got to call that a seven-point swing when they missed two that they should have had easily. Pelfrey misses uncontested, and then Danny Ferry comes down and nails the three-pointer. What could have been four points your way is now three points to do. Well, they got two big threes, one by Snyder. There's the five-second violation. Let's take a look at what Kentucky is doing, Dick. Well, see, there's the backdoor cut right now off the wing. They catch the defensive player. Oh, excellent cut. He's got to make that layup. He thought there was a push. Duke has opened the lead to 49-43. to Back with more from Springfield in a moment. A look at LaRon Ellis on the bench of Kentucky as Duke now has a six-point lead as he sits there with four fouls. Dick. Well, he went out of the game, was 43-43, two three-pointers by Snyder and Ferry, a six-zip run, and he's he's going to have to make a decision that he saw a normal situation. You wouldn't bring him in, but you limited personnel. He can't wait until they get out too far on him. Henderson with a nice ball. He got up high to get it, but couldn't get the tip to fall down, and so Kentucky comes up with the ball. I certainly wouldn't bring him in now, but if it got around eight or nine, he's going to have to make a decision. There's the backdoor cut. They just missed Fellhaus. G. Hansen trying to do it by himself. Puts the shot up and won't fall as it's long. Chris Mills trying to hang on to the ball, but Duke will come up with it as it goes out of bounds. I would love to have Chris Mills. He's a tough competitor. You watch Eddie Sutton right now. He is... Furious. That was, he did that during the time when he made that T.O., called that timeout. He was referring to basically the two backdoor cuts. He thought there were fouls on the ball. There's the zone. Two, three zone. Wide open is Henderson. The shot will not fall, and Chris Mills comes up with the rebound. Well, the 2 3 zone has taken away Duke's patented ocean game, the cutting, the screening. Aaron Feldhaus has the ball being watched by Danny Ferry. Pelfrey now. Quinn Snyder on him. Spread the court. Come out high. Bring him over the foul line extended. Get the good angle for the backdoor cuts. And here's the turnover. Nice defensive play by Phil Henderson who just reached in from behind the big guy Scott. And knocked the ball away and Danny Ferry comes down and nails it for two. It's getting down to decision time right now for Eddie Sutton. 13 to go, down eight. Have not scored since Ellis went to the sideline. Reggie Hansen now. See? Watch him handle. Pass the ball to the wing and then cut through without the ball or to the high post. There's the interchange on the wings. There's the cut down the lane. And watch Pelfrey to the side. Now Mills, if he makes the entry, now he'll go... A walk Hansen puts the ball on the floor and gets called for the walk. 51-43 is the score. As we take a look at Derek Duke, Miller the last time they got the basket as they bring it down, and who else but Danny Ferry, who has now 15 points in the game. Well, there's the good defensive play. They do a great job getting the turnover. Now they kick the ball up. Look at him run to the wing. He wants to run to the three-point line. Steps over the line. 
He can shoot the ball for a big fella. He can pass the ball. Excellent wing player. Great collegian. Will be a good NBA player. Lacks the speed to be a dominant NBA player. Danny Ferry from three-point this time and nails it. We've got a 54 to 43 lead now. More than that, you have 11 zip runs since Ellis has come out of the game. Tough time for Eddie Sutton. He's going to Ellis. He's not waiting any longer. Good decision by Eddie Sutton. 12 minutes left in the game. Despite the four fouls on LaRon Ellis, Eddie Sutton knows to have a chance to win this game, he's got to have his big guy in there. Has no chance without him. It's an NC. No contest without Ellis. Derek Miller, and it's blocked by Bricky, who just gets up and labels it against the backboard. Henderson then on the transition. Doesn't get the ball to go. Nice change of direction by Henderson. A little bit of the Johnny Dawkins there, slashing. And we're going to watch right here the defensive play. There's Miller rotating. A good block by Bricky. The good legs. Made one of the greatest blocks in his career against North Carolina in a big game with Duke and Carolina. So they won down in Chapel Hill. Ron Ellis on the bench for just under five minutes. And Duke goes on 11 to nothing run during that time 54 43 is now the score you know duke doesn't really play a tough pre-conference schedule not like their counterparts down there in chapel hill where they got a murderous schedule you look at duke early they have citadel eastern carolina northwestern will be an improved team with bill foster but they're playing them at home they have stetson miami cornell and davidson not nearly not nearly as bad as my award that's going out pre-conference pre Cupcake schedule to James T. Valvana. Towson State, Alabama State, Hopkins State, Coastal Carolina. He creates more cupcakes than hostess. <laughs> he figures he's got NC State. Anybody with a state on the name of gets to play NC State in the beginning of the season. It's now 56 to 43. 13 points. Laurent Ellis is back in the game. Derek Miller way off from the three-point shot. And Henderson comes up with the ball, and Duke's going to run with it a little bit. Oh, behind the back pass by Bricky to Ferry, and wide open is Henderson. That's a three-pointer, and it's 59 to 43. They're spotting up really well right now, getting into the open lanes of that zone. They're a good shooting basketball team. They should have really a lot of success against the zone. Fouls called away from the book on Quinn Snyder. Here's a look at Mike Krzyzewski and his staff. Watch the ball movement right here. They kick it back, a little Hollywood time, a little hot dog mustard time. Now there's Ferry, the excellent pass, a good reversal. Henderson squares up, excellent spacing and attacking the zone. It's now a 59-43 lead is why they're number one. Stay with us, there's 11 minutes left. They're Kentucky fans, but they look like they belong on the Duke side at Cameron Indoor Stadium. A little, a little wackos there. Duke has 16 straight points right now. Yeah, they did a great job pushing the ball up the court. Danny Ferry, his coach K, had a technical. Mike Krzyzewski, one of the real great coaches in America, has a great chance to be the Olympic coach. The next Olympic coach, maybe Mr. Krzyzewski or maybe Mr. Olsen, or could be an NBA coach. Yeah, when those guys go in, I think they may have a couple of NBA players bolstering the roster this time around. They should. Ron Ellis with the ball. He's now back into the game. Richie Farmer is into the game right now, Dick. Richie mm -hmm. Farmer is an interesting story. Looks a little bit like Scott Skiles. I'm not saying he plays like Scott Skiles. Number 32. A lot of controversy involving Richie. He wanted to go to Kentucky from day one. He was ready to get a scholarship deal. Brown wanted him at LSU. But he finally got his dream of wearing the blue and white and playing in the state of Kentucky. He scored 51 points in the state championship game, though they lost against Ballard with Allen Houston. Certainly a great one going with his dad, Wade, and Denny Crum to Louisville. He's Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. Richie Farmer can shoot the ball as well, and that's got to be one of the reasons why he's into the game, because they need some three-pointers. It's still a lot of time left, but they are down by 16 right now. Danny Ferry just went to the sidelines with his third foul of the game. And John Smith is in. They have a nice bench. When you can pull off the bench, John Smith, and get guys like Kubek to come off the bench, you're a solid basketball team, and Leitner's going to be a very good player as well, eventually, once he gets a little feel for this kind of competition. Reggie Hansen by himself. Oh, Reggie! Love it, love it, Reggie! Take it to the sky, big fella! 
A little bit of showtime for Woo! Reggie Hansen. We, this is why they say he is probably the best athlete on this team. Well, I think he shows a little frustration here over not being able to score earlier. Rotation by Smith late. Takes that baby and jams it home. It just about tells the story right there for Eddie Sutton. A little frustration. He knows it's going to be a long season with some of these young players he has. Well, they play it's tough people. It doesn't get easier with the likes of playing the Indianas and the Notre Dames in your pre-conference schedule. Hansen converts the three-point play. And now it's 59 to 46. Dick Vitale, you must be the most popular guy in Springfield. I hear your book signing. More signings than Edwin Newman. Oh, wow. I don't know that. We had what a good time. A, what a great book. Very first practice. Did a great job. It's, it's like it's sitting down and listening to you. Dick. Well, thanks a lot, John. I appreciate that plug. Right now, Kentucky's going to have to make a decision with their 2-3 zone. Down as they are, 13 points. They're going to have to make a decision. Can they come out and play man-to-man -man and force some turnovers? They get the turnover here out of their zone. John Pelfrey, being watched by Clint Snyder, thinks about going around the pick, but then just dishes it off to Chris Mills. Wide open for a while is Pelfrey, but he just decides not to shoot. Farmer to Hanson. Screening for Farmer right now, trying to get him the ball on that wing. There it is. Doesn't take the shot. Try to go inside to Ellis. They do, and reaching over the back. Looks like Henderson will be called with the foul. Right now, the score's 59-46. Let's go back to the studio and join Tim Brando. All right, John and Dick, showdown Saturday continuing in Pasadena. The Bruins trailing by five, and Rodney Pete, measles and all, into the end zone for the touchdown, 21-9. The second-ranked Trojans leading the scoreboard show at 530. We'll update that as well as Barry Sanders and more, John. Thanks, Tim. USC trying to remain undefeated in Kentucky. Down at this point by 13 to the top rank Blue Devils of Duke. John, I can't remember, I cannot remember when Kentucky has played scared basketball, where they've been inferior in personnel versus the opposition. And right now, when you're playing the kind of style they're playing, they're admitting, they are admitting, sending a message, we don't have your personnel. Oh, they got the fifth one on Laron, posted inside. They called him for pushing off. I thought it was the other way. Laron Ellis sent to the sideline, and that's been the story. When he was on the floor, the game was tied, 43-43. I thought it was questionable right here. You can call this either way. I mean, they're holding him right here. They're leaning on him. Poor call. They're leaning on Mr. Ellis right there. I don't blame him being a little aggravated. You can call that either way. Not a good call. If you wonder about a player like Laron Ellis of his stature fouling out with nine minutes left, simply put, Eddie Sutton does not have much else to put out there on the floor. Abdul Nabi took the law, but then gets stripped. Mills puts it up to Pelfrey. Pelfrey's double team, splits it, and Riff pitches it off to Richie Farmer. He now gets to the danger zone. They've got to start looking for some shots, and that could mean a faster paced game. Abdul Nabi's called for the foul. And a reminder, we have two great games of college football coming up tonight. West Virginia, number four in the nation, undefeated. Looking to go head-to-head -head with Notre Dame in a bowl game for the national championship. That's at six. And then following that, Miami, Florida. One loss, but they still think they could be the top-ranked team in the nation at the end of the year. They'll go up against LSU from the SEC. That's at 9 o'clock. Some great college football here. Yeah, that's going to be a good matchup. They'll have a tough time down in Death Valley. Don't count those Tigers out down here. I wonder if Dale Brown will be out there cheering. I think he's probably somewhere putting up a game plan for the SEC of his own. I'll tell you one thing. People better beat LSU this year in basketball because next year with Stanley Roberts and the kid they're getting O'Neal from out of Texas. What a combination they're going to be. And then they join Chris Jackson who oh, he have there this year from Gulfport, Mississippi. What a player. He can flat out shoot it, Mr. Jackson. He'll be a diaper dandy along with Lafonso Ellis of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And he ferry for three. It's short and will not. But Andy Bricky, rather Robert Bricky, is there with a rebound and puts it home. Good offensive rebound by Bricky. That's one of his specialties. Good legs, good strength inside. Attacks the glass. Let a win next man. Nice pass along the baseline to Mills. He pulls up, but not even close. Now Kentucky's just putting the ball up in the air every chance that they get. 
<laughs> ill-advised shots. They're so limited right now in what they can do against this good Duke basketball team. And now they miss their real catalyst, the big fella sitting on the sideline with five. Anybody wants to question Eddie Sutton for making that substitution and taking Ellis out and keeping him out for a period of time, I thought he had to make the decision that he did. It was 43-43, took him out, tried to buy some time, and then the kid got his fifth, went back on the floor and got his fifth foul. But I thought he made the right decision. They try to pass the ball into Scott, but great defense by Duke again. And Snyder brings it up the floor as Duke sets up the offense. 61 to 46. There's the patience right now. A lot of gaps in the zone. You got to be able to step into the wing area. Robert Bricky again with the shot from the outside. That's what they showed that he could do last year as well. They wanted from him, but he normally has had to bang on the inside. But with the team so big this year, he's going to be allowed to be up there on the perimeter. Well, they have him outside playing Pelfrey at the point as well. Billy King used to do that better than anybody in America defensively. Give it back to him. Oh, Snyder behind the back. Danny Berry, turnaround, but never got a chance to get set. Kentucky comes up with the ball. 63 to 46. Chris Mills working on Danny Ferry. Double team now as Kubek comes over, gets it to Scott. Wide open to Richie Farmer. But Quinn Snyder's there in a hurry. Can't get the shot. Scott with the shot. It's tipped around a couple of times by Hanson and Mills, but will not fall. Danny Ferry comes up with a rebound and brings it up for it. 6 10. And a point guard. Yeah, he can handle the ball. We know that. He can handle it really well. And he does so many things on the floor that you really dream of a player doing. Great size, rebound, shoot, play defense. There he is, gets free on the wing. Danny Ferry, the ball almost gets stuck. Kubek follows and is fouled by Hansen. Sixty-three to forty-six. There's six minutes and three seconds left in the game. There's Leron. He was the star here at 17 points. Only four rebounds, but he was very active offensively and really was getting free inside against Danny Ferry with some good, quick post moves. Go back at the line. He's got great touch, John. He has excellent rotation, good follow-through from out of the Albany area. Reminder to join Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Pete Axelm at 11.30 Eastern time in the morning for NFL Game Day, which sets up a great day of football, NFL football in ESPN. Prime time at 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock is the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. I can't wait till next week, next Wednesday, the semifinals in the NIT, the Big Apple over at Madison Square Garden. Five-second violation. There's a look at that matchup tomorrow from Miami. The New England Patriots up against the Dolphins. Both teams on the outside looking in right now as far as playoff spots, but those wild card berths are available. Unfortunately for the Patriots and Dolphins, they play in the AFC East, where a team called the Buffalo Bills play the 10 and 1 this year. Well, with a guy named Kelly, but what about Flutie and my guy Marino? What's happened to him? Danny, I'm going to have to change your name. Get rid of the AEIOU if you're not going to win. Unfortunately, you can't play every position there. Kubek is open for a while, decides not to shoot, pulls up, then lets it go. I love the way he shoots the ball, John. If he gets open for 10, 12 shots a game, he'll knock seven or eight down. See how they fan, they fan to the sideline. You can funnel to the middle of the court if you have a rejector defensively, or fan to the sideline. Drive them, beat them, or turn them. Bricky is really running. Really, Bricky is really executing defensively well. Here's the teams and the people that have picked Duke number one. What are you doing at the bottom? What's Vital on the bottom for? Vital's basketball, we're supposed to be on top. I'm with ESPN and to give the AP the lead, alphabetical order. That's what they told you, right? Go back. They're rated number one job, but they really don't have the explosive personnel. They're going to be a very good basketball team, but you can make a case for about 10 teams for number one in the nation. Danny Ferry was a three-pointer, but dishes it off. Out to Quinn Snyder, over to Ferry again. He's open, but brings it in. He gets the high percentage shot as he just bangs it off the glass. Well, they're doing anything they want now. You know, since it was 43-43, I'm not too good at math. It's 26-3 to since that segment. Am I right, Mr. Saunders? He's pretty good at math, as far as I can see. How about this math? Danny Ferry has 20 points in the game as Richie Farmer puts up 
ball that touches nothing but the backboard, doesn't even get to the rim. It was 43-43, 69-46 tells me it's 26 to, to three in that one spurt. Without even a calculator, you get that. Masters in 30, went to Seton Hall, proud of it. Ricky with the shot, doesn't fall, and Ellis is there with the rebound. See, this is the problem, they can't get any easy baskets. It's Chris Mills. Watch this pass, watch the pass. Oh no, Barry, Barry had Ricky for the slam. Oh, if I were, hey, don't give him five, Ricky. Don't give him five. What do I see, Danny? I thought he's gonna make me look good and drive that bounce pass. Here's the two on one. Right now, he brings the defender to him, a little fake at the defender, and takes it to the goal. Not a bad move, but I would have rather seen him give up the bounce pass. 69 to 46 is the score. The number one Blue Devils lead it. It's 58 seconds left, Danny Ferry has hit the first free throw. Look at that concentration. It this comes up short. Ray Tucker is there, though, to put home the rebound. Another one of those big guys that Duke has, as we told you, six of them at 6'10 or large, largest team in the ACC. They're bringing in some great recruits next year, John. What a backcourt they'll be playing at Duke. Bobby Hurley and a kid by the name of Billy McCaffrey. Hurley's such a fierce competitor out of St. Anthony's in Jersey City. I believe he'll start right away, and McCaffrey can really shoot it. 3.38 left, and it's a 72 to 46 game right now, just a matter of survival for Wildcats down in a big way, not just in the score, but they are down, of course, their program Dick suffering the allegations and the 18 NCA violations, and they have a lot of work ahead of them just to get the program, the image back. Well, there's no question the image has been totally, really, I think, destroyed. It's been an embarrassment, as I said earlier, on the top of the show to the University of the State of Kentucky. Cliff Hagen, the athletic director, they say resigned. I like to believe uh, he didn't resign. He probably, you want to really believe it, he was let go and fired, had no other choice. My point is, at that time, they should have also asked the coaching staff to step aside as well because of the embarrassment that all of this has caused. Yes, you are innocent to proven, to your proven guilty, but I really believe that for the image, whether you're innocent or guilty to the allegations, that there's been such an embarrassment out there to the university that they would be better off bringing a new fresh breath of air to start a new era at Kentucky. Kubek, he can shoot it from way outside. He is a great shooter, but I agree with you. It has nothing to do with the coaching staff, nothing against Dwayne oh, Casey and Eddie Sutton. They're, they've done a tremendous job with this program, but it's the image, and it's Kentucky basketball. What's bigger, the personnel, the coaches, or the program itself? Well, the program right now is so embarrassed over the so-called allegation. But today, for example, a scathing article by Charles Pierce. Charlie Pierce, there's the deuce inside by Hanson. A scathing article in the Boston Herald talking about at Kentucky, you get a brown envelope. At Duke, it is a diploma. That kind of embarrassment going across the nation, I have to believe that somewhere down the line, somewhere down the line, something has to be done to bring about a new, new look. And there's a look at the coaching staff who's really uh, had to face the run of this, and the coaching staff has to be accountable. There's no doubt about it. And these guys, I'll tell you this now, they believe they're innocent. They'll tell you to your face, that flat out we are innocent for all the charges. Dwayne Casey had you and I last night. We talked at length to him. And he's suing right now for $6.9 million. Emory, you know about the Emory Express, the whole bit. And right now, he claims no way that I sent any cash to Chris Mills. So these guys believe they're innocent, but we're talking about the stigma, the perception that's out there. The only way to change it at the time when Hagen went, I don't say fired him now, but when Hagen went, they should have also made a decision with the coaching staff. Folks, if you think it's easy for Dick to say that about oh, any wow. son, you've known him for years, he's a close friend of yours. And that's very tough for you to say about anybody, let alone a It hurts, friend. especially coaches. I love the coaching profession. I absolutely do. But I hate to see a guy like Hagen take all the brunt of it either. I mean, uh, uh, that's not really fair in a situation as well. And I think that the president, Roselle, is trying to break. He's from Duke, by the way, you know. He's a Duke graduate. And I think the AD down there would be perfect as a guy by the name of C.M. Newton, Mr. Clean 
team. He would be perfect. He's from, graduated out of Kentucky. He's the coach at Vanderbilt, and he would be the perfect guy to be the athletic director to get this thing rolling in the right way at the University of Kentucky. Duke starts to bring some guys in off their bench. Brian Davis, a freshman out of Bladensburg, Maryland, is into the game. They say he's one of the three big-name freshmen that have come in, not as big as Leitner and Crawford Palmer, but they say he's a guy who could be a real player for them in the future. Well, he's a good athlete. There's a look at Danny Ferry, 24 points, six rebounds, ate a lot of donuts today. How many donuts should we put there on his stats? You and I were teasing him over at the donut shop with Billy King, and then he was teasing Billy King about getting a receipt. <laughs> For a dollar and a quarter, he said, Billy King gets the receipt, has to put it in now. Well, he's working in TV and radio now, Billy, and there's Tommy Amicus sitting next to him, the former outstanding point guard, now a graduate assistant. I know he'd rather be in a uniform. Aaron Feldhaus misses the free throw. Joe Cook now has the ball playing at the point guard for Duke. They want to give him some time here. Davis, a young freshman with so much talent, they say. They get great spacing offensively, 15 to 17 feet apart, which is basically what you have to have to have a good offensive set. Nice job to get back by Joe Cook and steal the ball. And Kubek puts up the shot, and it's good. Get him open shots, John, and just count it. Put it down. Put the deuce down. John Pelfrey looking for Feldhaus, but again, the too much defense by Duke. That time it was Christian Leitner who was all over Feldhaus as he tried to get the ball to Feldhaus, get Pelfrey, and the ball goes out of bounds. Mike Krzyzewski up barking the signal. It's amazing how the whole game changed when Ellis went out with that 43-43 spurt. Now there's Duke, Joe Cook, trying to become a scorer all of a sudden, John. Well, that's what they said the knock was against him last year. said, hey, Joe, we brought you in here as a defensive player, and someone who could possibly bring the ball up, but you want to shoot it every time you get it. Well, you talk about a guy that's going to challenge and be this guy's player. I was talking about Bobby Hurley, whose dad is the coach at St. Anthony's and has a lot of the principles and philosophies of Mike Krzyzewski. When you talk about class with a capital C, you talk about Duke, and you talk about the way they do things academically, athletically. When you look at the numbers they've posted over the last five years, they've averaged 27 wins a year. But the biggest average of all, all their players graduate, and just, you never hear one little rumple at all about the Duke program. Joe Cook now getting the work at point guard. Quinn Snyder, of course, is their man there. And Henderson will usually sub in for Snyder, but Cook, they feel if they can get some work for him there, It'll be a big bonus for the Blue Devils. Reggie Hansen on the floor. And Derek Miller, not much of a factor in this game. There he is on the wing, puts up the shot, and finally does hit it. That's, That's only two. That's yeah. what they say he's supposed to do, be an outstanding shooter, but they're waiting to see the shooting ability of Derek Miller, and he'll get his chance this year. Davis, the freshman with the ball, tries to work it towards the inside. Leitner. Nice pass by Leitner. Buckley. Buckley with a nice move to the hoop. Buckley's father played that dude. Good move inside Buckley, but what a pass by Christian Leitner. Looked a little bit like Danny Ferry with that excellent bounce pass. The game is over. 80-55 to 55 is the final. Duke, the number one team in the nation, showing exactly why. Well, I'll tell you, what a great job defensively when they had to do it. But you got to give Kentucky credit for hanging. But then Duke showed their class, and Danny Ferry was absolutely outstanding when he had to.